So now we're down on the range and um, I'm going to dem demo what it looks like for a near perfect grip um, or forming that near perfect grip with five shots. And I want to build, and when I'm doing this, I want to have some constants, right? So I'm going to actually say one, two, three, four, five. And that way on this first target, uh, I'm shooting at that pace. And then on the second, third, and fourth, I'm shooting at that same pace, but my grip's going to change. And I'll explain what I'm doing um, before each target. So it'll be four, five round strings, but the first one's a near perfect grip, right? Five shots. Hot as shit out, my hands are sweaty. I haven't put any chalk on it yet. So we're just gonna see how it shakes out. So that was a near perfect grip. Um, you can see the group. Um, first one was a little low, uh, and then you know, brought it up to where I wanted to be hitting. So the second one I'm gonna demo is if I'm over gripping with my firing hand, right? And then the loose grip with my support hand, what, what my shot group is doing. Now the big thing when you're doing this to show the difference is, is to have a have the constant so I'm gonna to try to keep it at that same one two three four five that way you can gather some data um, across all four of these parts right, so as you can see um, if you can't see the target we'll, we'll move up closer and I'll show and I'll just recap each of the targets and then kind of what what was happening with the shot break. And so for this third one, I'm going to over grip with my uh, support hand and keep kind of a looser grip with my firing hand. You can see that just felt really weird to try to over grip with my support hand and try to keep my firing hand loose. But all right, and then lastly, um, I'm going to keep both hands super loose on the gun and kind of show you what what happens there. It's even with the shot, the shot groups being, uh, or excuse me, with the gun, with both hands really loose, it's hard. It's actually really hard for me to, to do that um, because I naturally want to fix it, right? As soon as the gun gives me some feedback, it's like jumping in my hands. I want to kind of, um, you know, fix that. So, uh, but the, the whole point of this demo demonstration is to show you with some constant, a constant being. Uh, trying to be, you know, that cadence one, two, three, four, five, the same distance, right? That's a constant, the same type of target. Um, so now we'll move up and I'll talk through what we got as far as the, the shot groupings. All right, so, uh, so shot four, five round strings, and now we're up by the targets. This first five round string was uh, a near perfect grip, as you can see, the grouping. Uh, first round was a little low, and then I brought it up into where I wanted to be hitting, you know, and I'm actually, you know, aiming. You know here versus i know i have if i'm saying all a zone hits c zone here and then outside that's d so i try to keep myself here and then go in even even more narrow like hey i want to try to shoot this a out in this a zone box um so that's that group um this is me over gripping with my firing hand uh, you'll notice a pattern as we move across but over gripping with my firing hand um is still better than a loose grip with my firing hand in a, in a and obviously significantly better than a loose grip with both hands, but uh, a loose grip with your firing hand and a strong grip with your, your support hand is gonna be substantially worse than you know, seeing this. I was able to, the, the first three rounds, I'm like torquing that gun, pulling my shots basically is what ended up happening because I'm really wrenching in, monkey, monkey gripping here and my support hand's not countering that movement. So even if you do over grip, if your support hand gets in there and squeezes harder than your your firing hand it will right itself um so you know you can see first three rounds and then i actually was able because i had a, a strong grip on my firing hand i have control of the gun in this case i'm able to bring it back on the target somewhat this is um uh firing hand is loose and support hand is is uh overpowering the well not just overpowering but Obviously the firing hand is loose in this example when you can see there's no consistency here. It was even hard for me to shoot on that cadence that I was able to do in the first two because the gun's kind of jumping around a bit. Um, so that just kind of gives you some data, right? Of how important, you know, gripping the gun is, but your support hand, if used effectively, can 
can help shore up a lot of these other um, issues that you might have. But if you're not gripping with your firing hand at all, you're never going to be consistent. Okay. I'm just going to jump around on you. Um, as you can see in this, this group here. And then lastly, it was even harder for me with both hands super loose, um, you know, to be able to have a consistent group here. Um, and also to shoot on that same cadence. But you guys get the, the, gist, of, the gist of what I'm trying to, to demonstrate here. Um, now it's just going out and getting the reps in and getting, like I said, thousands of, of things, you know, thousands of reps doing this kind of shit. And that's how you build muscle memory, you become subconscious. Um, and then that's really where when the gun malfunctions or does something different, you're not like looking to the target to validate that. You're just like internally knowing your tactile feedback you're getting from it is telling you, oh man, I pulled that for sure. And then you can just use the target to help kind of validate what you already felt. Okay. A lot of people like are trying to look where their hits are going and they're already too late, especially if you want to start performance, uh, pushing the performance of your, your gun your gun work, your uh, gun handling and, and your shot placements and things like that. So um, really start paying attention to that, in, you know, that tactile feedback and then just use the target to kind of help validate certain things. Um, one of the things that could potentially also happen with a, with a, a loose grip on your firing hand and, and your support or just a loose grip with your firing hand is like if this magazine was topped off and I have a loose grip, meaning my wrists are, are kind of also kind of flat like a flailing then the gun is potentially not going to cycle correctly and if the if the magazine's topped off that pressure could just be enough to actually cause a stovepipe which i think i can actually replicate that here and i'll, I'll demo it like so with a with a high quality gun you may uh it, you may be able to get away with a lot but like i said um if you're topped off the max capacity you know on your on your mags even even a gun like this spectrum top it's still gonna challenge it if your if your wrist is loose nice. so that this is what a stovepipe looks like and with a with a not even i was still gripping the gun there um a little bit but just know that if you have your your wrist is not locked in and you have a loose grip on this gun with your firing hand, it doesn't, it can't cycle correctly. So to clear the malfunction, I'm not gonna get into that class. Um, I don't need to freak out, but just lock the slide back to the rear, clear the malfunction. Usually it's just the tip of that. And then either put that same mag in if your, if your resources are, are uh, an issue or, or get a new mag in and then get back on it.